Alright, so hello and welcome. In this video we are playing around with network graphs to visualize the institutional ownership of companies listed in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Graphs are a hot topic in all data related fields and even beyond this. You can use them to visualize dependencies which you won't be able to see otherwise. So let's understand this graph. The circles in this graph are called nodes. The red colored nodes are the companies in the Dow Jones. So for example Apple, Coca-Cola, Microsoft and so on. The yellow colored nodes are the institutional holders of those companies. So for example BlackRock, Vanguard, uh, Berkshire and so on. The lines, so these ones here, are called edges and they represent the connections between those nodes. So let's take an example. Apple is held by Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street and also Berkshire Hathaway. Among others, of course, just an example. Berkshire, on the other hand, is also holding AXP, Coca-Cola and so on. The line width, or rather edge width, is accounting for the value of the shares they are holding. So Berkshire is obviously holding a larger position in Apple than in Coca-Cola. Alright, so I think you got the concept. In case you didn't, just leave me a comment. Now let's build that step by step in Python. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, we need to install Network X, which is the graph library we are working with. And you see in my case, the requirement is already satisfied. Now let's import some libraries, which we need. We need pandas for data handling, Network X as our network graph library, matplotlib for visualization purposes, and Y Finance to get the institutional holders for a particular asset. Now let's do some simplifications. We are first of all creating a graph and we only consider two assets. All right. Before we are doing it for all uh, Dow Jones assets. Therefore, the first asset is stored in variable one and we are creating a ticker object from Jehu Finance and provide the ticker symbol of Apple. With that, we have a ticker object, which we can use to access information on the Apple stock. So for example, the institutional holders. So with that, we are getting the institutional holders for Apple, which you see here stored in the data frame. So this is the holder column, the shares they're holding and the value of the shares. Okay, so let's just assign that to a variable which we are calling Apple. Now we want to add a column to this data frame, which is just containing the ticker symbol of Apple. The reason behind that is just a mapping reason. So I want to know, okay, Vanguard is holding a value of something here, and this is mapped to the Apple ticker symbol. So I can just add a column here, com for company, and take the variable containing the ticker object and use the ticker. So I'm just adding a column here uh, which is containing the Apple ticker symbol. Nothing more than that. Okay, now let's create a second variable which is also a ticker object of Microsoft. This is the ticker symbol for Microsoft. Same logic as here, creating a variable Microsoft. Take a look at the institutional holders and I'm adding a column to that, which is containing the ticker of the second ticker object. All right. Now I'm just, yeah, concatenating those two data frames, Apple and Microsoft. So I'm creating a variable together and use the concat function of pandas and provide Apple and Microsoft. Okay, so with that, I'm just getting a data frame containing both uh, holders of the assets. And as you see, here's the mapping. Here's the company mapping. So Apple and these are the holders for Microsoft. All right. And now I can create a graph. And Network X has a pretty handy function when you are dealing with data frames, which is the from pandas edges function. And this is taking a data frame, which is our 
together data frame. And now you have to provide a source and a target. And the source of this data frame is the holder, right? So these are just the holder of the assets. And the target are the companies. So these are the ticker symbols, okay? And with that, we have created a graph. So if we are taking a look at that, we just gain the information, okay? This is a graph class. And with that, we can access, for example, the nodes of this graph. And now we are getting the holders here and also the companies, right? Now to visualize that, we can use annex draw, then provide G. With that, we are getting a graph like this, which is not that meaningful, right? We don't see what is what. So we are using the width labels function here and provide true. And now we are getting some more information here, right? So you see here, here's Microsoft and all the, the institutional holders of Microsoft and here's Apple and all the institutional holders of Apple. At least, and this is very important, the top 10 holders. So it might be that Berkshire has a position in Microsoft, but it's just not um, in the top 10 holdings, all right? So we see Vanguard is holding both Microsoft and Apple. We can see BlackRock is holding both Microsoft and Apple and so on. All the fancy stuff, so the node size dependent on the, the degree, the edge width, we are, we are doing now when taking a look at all um, ticker symbols of the Dow Jones. But this is it for now. So this is, you have to understand this and then we can move on to the next part, which is getting all tickers for the Dow Jones industrial average. So first of all, we are just pulling the tickers and I've covered that in many other videos. I'm just using a read HTML function and provide the Wikipedia link of the Dow Jones industry average, which is containing a table, um, which is all, which is then containing the ticker symbols. So I'm using read HTML here and index for one as that is the second table in this Wikipedia page, right? So I'm just showing you now I'm getting a data frame like this. And I'm only interested in the symbol column here, which is containing the ticker symbol. So I can just use ticker symbol to list. And with that, I'm getting a tickers list here. So I'm just reassigning tickers to that. And now I have a, a list containing all tickers. And I can iterate through that. But first of all, I'm creating a list, which is later, or which is populated um, with the data frames containing the institutional holders for all those assets. So the data frame you saw above. Now I'm using for ticker in tickers and then assign variable and create a ticker object of the particular ticker. Then I'm creating a frame by using the institutional holder holders and then I'm adding a column company to map the ticker symbol, right? So this is nothing more than the steps I just showed you when uh, considering only two assets. After that, I'm just appending this frame to this frames list. All right, so let's execute that. And this can take some time. So two or roughly two minutes. So we are already moving on. So we have a list containing a lot of data frames and we wanna um, combine them. So I'm creating a variable here all together. And again, use the concat function and just provide this list containing those data frames. So this is just a, a data frame containing all uh, 30 components of the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So let's take a look at that. So you see just a data frame containing all companies uh, and the institutional holders. So yeah, let's create a graph out of that and the logic from before applies. 
So we are creating a graph use from pandas edge list and then provide all together. The source is the holder and the target is the company. And we can again draw that graph and we are giving it some labels. And now <laughs> you see this mess, right? And yeah, the next part is about uh, cleaning this up and make it meaningful. So first of all, we need a way uh, bigger figure here, right? So we can just use, uh, let's test 50, 40, uh, typo here. And now we can at least see something. Let's zoom in. Yeah. So we can at least have some insights here, right? But yeah, we have to do some more work here. So first of all, let's change the node size. Or before that, let's change the node colors. That's even more simple. So to change the node colors, we are iterating over the, the graph. And we are just creating a list here, colors. And now we are using for node in G. So we're iterating over all nodes and we are checking if node in our data frame all together is in the company column and we are iterating over the values, then we want to append which color did we give it red, right? So we want to color the companies in red and everything else in yellow, right? So let's, oh, sorry, typo here, if note. Okay, now we have a colors list, right? And we can just add them here as an argument using node color as colors. Oh, sorry. So let's execute that again. Something wrong. Ah, okay. Had a typo here, sorry. So let's execute that again. And now we have what we wanted to achieve, right? So the institutional holders are yellow and the companies are red. Okay, so next step. What's next? We need the node size, right? And yeah, the node size should be depended or depending, sorry, on the degree. So what is the degree? So let's take a look at that together. We can use degree on the graph and now we're getting the degrees and what is a degree so a degree of 30 is that Vanguard has relationships to all companies right so whereas let's say JP Morgan Chase has only four relationships right so the degree is just the number of relationships of the particular node Okay, now how can we use this to form the node size? Therefore, we have to access those values here, right? And how can we do that? First of all, we are transforming this degree view into a dictionary by just using the dictionary function of Python. And then as you see, we are getting the dictionary containing the degree values. Now, these values are too small. So if you're using them, you won't get a proper node size. So I'm just multiplying them by 100, but you can also multiply them by 200. It's dependent on your demands here, how large you wanna have the nodes. I'm just taking a hundred multiplier here. And now I'm just looping over this dictionary and multiply every value by 100. And how can I do that? By just using V for value times 100 for 
value in and then this dictionary and I want to uh, use the values in this dictionary so I can just use uh, dot values of this dictionary. Right, so this is a list comprehension and we are ending up with this. So these are just, so the first value was a 30 and this uh, 3000 because I just multiplied the values by 100. And this list, so I'm just copy pasting this, we can just use for the node size argument. So let's get rid of that and let's provide node size and then just copy paste this. And now we are creating the node size dependent on the degree and that's pretty cool, which you will see in some seconds. And now you see we are getting, for all companies of course we're getting the same node size, makes sense, right? But the institution holders node size is dependent on the number of degrees they have. So you see the BlackRock, Vanguard and, and stuff like that has the highest degree, so 30, and this is why the node size is uh, that big. Okay, so what is still missing? Yes, the edge width. <clears throat> so we don't want to have only lines, but we want to have the lines dependent on the uh, value the institutional holders are holding, right? And this is probably the, the hardest step here. Therefore, we have to do some amendments. So first of all, I have to zoom out a bit here. All right. So first of all, we have to set a, the edge attribute when creating the graph <coughs> to true. And now we are using, so I'm just creating a variable here, edge list, and I'm using the network X library, use two edge lists and provide my graph. And with that, I'm getting my edge list. And now I'm also getting the attributes of this edge and I'm interested in the value. So again, this is just the amount of money which is into this particular stock. So I'm only interested in getting the values here. And again, I can use a list comprehension to achieve that. And as I'm iterating over this edge data view, the first element is the institutional holder, second one is the stock ticker, and third one is the dictionary, and I'm interested in the value here, right? So I can just use V, then index for two, because I'm interested in the third element here, so this dictionary, and then I'm looking for <coughs> the key value, value, right? for we in edge list. And with that, I'm getting a list containing the values, how much money is invested in this company, right? And as these numbers are way too big for the edge uh, width, I'm just multi, not, not multiplying, sorry, I'm just dividing this by a number of 50 billion. So yeah, I mean, you can, you, you have to know what number you're taking. I think this is a um, quite okay number. So I did some trial and errors to find, find out this number here. Okay, so with that, I'm getting the width here and I can just copy paste this syntax, then go to my uh, draw function again and just add the width argument and provide uh, this syntax here. Close the parentheses here. Oh, sorry. And now we got the graph from the very beginning, right? Containing the edge width representing the amount of money which is invested in this particular stock. So one more beautification, I was using margins on the nodes. So you can do that by just providing uh, an axis 
using the get current access function of uh, plotly and then just set the x uh, x color here so i'm using collections set edge color and provide dark gray so this is just the number for dark gray so with that i'm getting the graph from the very beginning so yeah i hope you found this interesting in case you did please leave it a like uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and yeah i'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos thank you very much for watching bye bye